Us bass teachers love teaching slap bass, but we get way too excited and cover too much stuff at once, including my dumb ass. So we're gonna go through seven drills that cover every detail that's causing you problems. So by the end of this video, you're getting a solid, juicy slap sound. We're not gonna do pop, we're not gonna do double thumbs, we're not gonna do double pops, we're not gonna do it all at once. We're gonna paint the fence, just like daniel -san. Wax on. Wax off. Why you got me doing all these boring drills? I just want to slap a de bass. Danielson, show me sand the floor. <laughs> wow, I was slapping de bass all along. That's right, we're doing all slaps, no other techniques. Because remember, Bruce Lee said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once. I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So let's scare the shit out of Bruce Lee and get your basic slap sounding good. If you think doing only slaps with no pops or hammer-ons or anything is gonna be boring, check out some stuff you can do with just the thumb. I'm gonna have you playing some actual music later, but these first few drills are really important to do without any accompaniment so you can hear yourself super clearly. Here's the deal. The thumb is what hits the strings when you slap, but slapping is not really about the thumb. It's about rotating the entire forearm at the elbow joint. So it's not about wiggling the thumb muscle. It's not about rotating the wrist at all. It's a simple twist of the forearm at the elbow. And I used to teach this as being like turning a doorknob like every other bass teacher. The problem is it's not really the same motion at all. So to get you to really feel this motion so you don't need any stupid analogies, here's drill number one, which might seem stupid, but remember this is all coming straight from Mr. Miyagi. Show me, slap the table. So on the top of a table or desk, hold your hand with your thumb pointed up, your fingers curled in, and then twist your forearm down so your thumb hits the table. Now try doing it like this with just your thumb muscle. Now go back to the forearm. There's a huge difference in power, right? It's louder, the table vibrates more. Now let's try doing that with wrist movement, like on this plane. Okay, the fingers just get in the way, right? You can't even get your thumb to the table. So the wrist doesn't work, the thumb muscle's wimpy, and the forearm twist gives us a nice solid slap on the table. So it's clear now that slap is all about the forearm, right? If I test this out on bass, I'll get the same effect. And don't worry about playing along for now, you can just listen. So here's just the thumb muscle. Super wimpy. Here's trying to do it with the wrist. It doesn't work at all. I just end up banging the strings with my fingers. And here's rotating the forearm. Boom, nice juicy slap tone. When we did slap the table, did you notice which part of your thumb was hitting the table? It was probably the outside edge just past the knuckle, and that's exactly where you want to slap the bass. Show me, notice the thumb. Huh? Let's slap the table just a little bit more and notice which part of your thumb you hit with. You're probably hitting right there where that sharpie mark is on the outside edge past the knuckle. If I try to go further down my thumb towards the hand, then my palm starts getting in the way which is gonna be a problem on the bass. And if I try to use like the, the pad of my thumb, it just, it's hard to get the right angle. So it's really all about that outside edge. The same thing applies on bass. Again, you can just listen for now. I'll have you slapping in a minute. So if I just rotate my forearm, it's the outside edge of my thumb on the knuckle or just past it that tends to wanna to hit the string. If I try to go further back on my thumb, then I get nothing, because my palm gets in the way and starts muting the string. Outside edge for the win! Before we get into actual string slapping drills, you need to get your bass in the right position. Which brings us to the great up-down debate. There are two basic ways to position your thumb when slapping. There's thumb down, where your thumb is pointing below the string. And there's thumb up, where your thumb is pointing above the string. There's a lot of debate about which position is better. My thumb down style defeats your thumb up style. 
We will see. I prefer the thumb up technique, and that's what I teach to my students for two reasons. One is I think it's easier to hit accurately, just hit one string at a time. And two, it allows you to learn the double thumbing technique later on more easily, where you go down and up with your thumb. But the basics we cover in this lesson will apply to thumb up and thumb down. So here's how to position your bass for either technique. Thumb down positioning looks like this. Thumb down technique, adjust your strap length so that your base is low enough that you can comfortably get your thumb pointing down somewhere between the fingerboard and your neck pickup, if you have one. So that'll be somewhere around like waist height or a little lower, a little higher. It's pretty easy to find that position for most people. Here's thumb down in action. This is Flea with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He's got his base strapped a little below his waist, which gets the thumb pointing down, and he's gonna be slapping right past the end of the fingerboard. And here's Kiyoshi. Her base is around waist height, so the thumb's pointing down, and again, she's slapping just past the end of the fingerboard. Thumb up positioning looks like this. It's a little trickier to get the right position for the thumb up technique. The goal is to comfortably point your thumb just above parallel on the strings, somewhere between the end of the fingerboard and the pickup. And there are three things you can adjust to get in the right position for your body. Number one is strap height. You need your base high enough that you can comfortably point your thumb above parallel on the string. So if the string is 12 o'clock, you want your thumb at about 11 o'clock. So that'll definitely be higher than waist height, maybe somewhere just below the right chest or rib cage area. The second thing you can tweak is the angle of your neck to the floor, whether it's more parallel or more tilted up. The more parallel it is, the easier it'll be to get that thumb up angle on the strings. The third thing you can tweak if your hand is ending up in the wrong part of the bass, if you're too far onto the neck or too far back, is to adjust the horizontal positioning of whether your bass is more in front of you like this or more off to your side like this. That'll adjust where your hand naturally falls on the string, as well as possibly making it more comfortable for you based on the size and shape of your torso. Here's thumb up in action. This is Ida Nielsen. She's got her base strapped over her rib cage and the neck pointed up a little bit. So that's high enough to get her thumb pointing just above parallel, slapping past the end of the fingerboard. And here's Marcus Miller, same thing, strapped over the rib cage, neck pointed slightly up. So the thumb gets just above parallel, slapping between the end of the fingerboard and the neck pickup. There are two parts to a good slap sound, note and percussion. The note part sounds about the same as if you were to just pluck that string. Hear how that note continues whether I'm slapping or plucking. And the percussion part comes from the strings smacking against the frets from the collision of the slap. If you're not getting a good slap sound, you're either missing the note part or the percussion part. So I'm gonna show you how to be your own slap bass doctor and diagnose these issues. Show me, slap the bass. So in scenario A, let's say you're getting only note and no percussion. You can recreate this issue like I'm doing by just hitting too softly. So the first thing you can try is just hitting a little harder and make sure you're using the forearm rotation and not wiggling the thumb. Having your action too high may cause this issue too. The action is how far your strings are from the neck. And if you've got more than about five millimeters between your E string and the 12th fret, you might need a setup, which could entail tightening the truss rod or lowering the bridge saddles 
And if any of that doesn't make sense to you, please go let a professional do it. It's not that expensive and you'll be surprised what a difference a good setup can make, especially for slapping. So onto scenario B, what if you're getting all percussion and no note like this? You can recreate this issue like I'm doing by holding your thumb way too tense and leaving it on the string after the smack. So this happens usually because your thumb is too tense and it's staying on the string after the initial smack of the slap. So you just need to relax your thumb. You can also get this issue if your palm is touching the string. So make sure you're using the outside edge of your thumb past the knuckle because if you go too far back towards the hand, your palm gets in the way. And also make sure there's a little bit of space between the strings and your palm and wrist, which you can do by just adjusting the angle a tiny bit. You might still be having some trouble with that second scenario where you're getting all percussion and no note because it's really hard to learn how to relax the thumb. So that's what we're gonna focus on next. The most frustrating part of slap bass is trying to get your thumb to relax. The faster you go and the more complex you play, the more you'll tense, tense up, but that's actually the opposite of what you want. You want a really relaxed thumb. So here's an away from the bass drill you can do that's super simple that you can use as a warm up and also as a way to reframe how you're thinking about the slap technique. Show me, relax the thumb. So let your arm hang by your side. You can do both arms if you want, but I'll just do one. And then carefully but loosely flail your arm with the same type of rotation you'd use to slap. But your thumb and fingers are just hanging super relaxed. And you just want to make sure you're only flailing on this one rotational plane. I'm kind of tensing up to demonstrate for you. You don't want to be flailing your wrist like this or to the side like this. You just want to be rotating the forearm and it's okay if the upper arm starts rotating too. You're just trying to loosen up. So check this out. If I do that flailing exercise and then I let my hand move back to the base, that's slapping. Super relaxed thumb gives me a nice juicy tone. And the coolest thing about that is that if my thumb is relaxed enough, when I twist my forearm down for the slap, I don't have to twist it back up to get my thumb out of the way because it bounces off the string naturally from the momentum of colliding with the string. If I tense my thumb up, then it doesn't work anymore and then I'm back to that situation where I'm getting all percussion and no note. So the next step is to just do some slaps on an open E string, keeping in mind everything you've learned so far. So you're rotating the forearm, you're not wiggling the thumb, hitting with the outside edge of the thumb, past the knuckle. Nice relaxed thumb. If you're hearing only note and no percussion, just hit a little harder. If you're hearing only percussion and no note, then relax your thumb and make sure your palm isn't getting in the way. Here's a simple but fun slap tune you can start with to practice all these variables along with some music. This is We Care A Lot by Faith No More. One, two, three, four. You probably notice that I'm muting some of the notes in between slaps to get it to sound right. Don't worry if that's too hard for you. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Danielson, show me subscribe to Bass Buzz. Wow, I find this content informative and stimulating. Now that you've got a good slap sound and a relaxed thumb, the next step is accuracy. So first let's make sure you can get some nice clean slaps on single strings. Show me, nail the accuracy. The best way to do this is to do one slap and then mute by just touching the strings with your fretting hand so that you can hear clearly on every slap whether you hit just the string you're aiming for or if you got some extra noise, like I just hit the A string on accident, accidentally on purpose. So let's try doing this together on the E string. So you just slap the E, mute it, slap the E, and every time you slap, you're listening for, am I getting the note, am I getting the percussion, and am I hitting the string I'm aiming for? Let's do the same thing now on the A string. So just slap, mute, slap, mute, slap, mute. Listening for note, percussion and accuracy, meaning that I just hit the A string and not the other strings. And you are gonna miss and hit the other strings a ton. This is hard. So look at your slapping hand if you need to. And keep in mind, this takes a lot of practice, unless you're like way ahead of me when I first started. You begin a luck. So now onto the D and G strings, which are harder to slap than the E and the A. And no matter what you do, they're gonna sound thinner. This is the D, this is the E. Okay, they sound different, but you're listening for the same things. You just want note and percussion and accuracy. So let's do that on the D string. Slap, mute, 
slap, mute, slap, mute, and diagnose the issue if you're having one, if you're getting only note like this, then just slap a little harder or check your action. If you're getting all percussion, then relax your thumb and make sure your palm's not getting in the way. And as you go down to your higher pitch strings, make sure that your thumb angle is staying constant. So you still want, if you're doing the thumb up technique, you want that 11 o'clock angle on the string, whether you're on the E, A, the D, or the G. So now let's move on to the G string and do the same thing. Slap, mute, slap, mute, slap, mute, slap, mute. Just listening for note, percussion, and accuracy every time. It might take you a while to get good at slapping the D and G strings, so you can focus on E and A if you want to, for starters. So to start drilling your accuracy in a musical context, you can think of bass lines that you already know that just use one string and do them with the slap technique. Like you know how everybody likes to play the smoke on the water guitar riff but in the wrong key and do it on bass so starting on an E instead of a G? Let's do that together. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Or we could play the actual bass line to Smoke on the Water in the correct key of G. I'll just jiggle the notes around a little bit so they're all on the E string. And please use the speed controls to slow this down if you're just starting because building thumb speed takes time. Ready? Here we go. One, two, one, two, three. By the way, if you're having any trouble with the rhythm so far in Smoke on the Water or We Care A Lot, I cover that kind of eighth note syncopation in mega detail in my Beginner to Badass course at BassBuzz.com. Isn't that right, Mr. Miyagi? It's a very good course. Once you can get a good slap sound on each string separately, it's time to develop the next level of accuracy with string crossing. Show me, cross the strings. An easy way to start with this is to just go across the strings like E, A, D, G, G, D, A, E, but do four slaps on each string so you don't have to change as often. And also you still want to mute in between slaps so you can listen for note, percussion, and accuracy on every single slap. Let's try doing this together a few times and again use the speed controls if you're just starting to slow it down. Or speed it up. Alright, here we go. And remember to mute with your fretting hand on those quarter note rests. One, two, three, four. E, mute, two, mute, slap, mute. Every time you're listening for note, percussion, and accuracy. Back down G again. Two, three, four. I missed. You can make up your own string crossing patterns once that's easy. You could try working towards changing strings every slap, E, A, D, G, or you can break up the order too. You go E, G, A, D, E, D, A, G. Now you can try slapping bass lines that you know that incorporate string crossing, like how about A Little Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. If this looks like too much to concentrate on, you can ditch the little slide at the end of the first bar, and you can also just stay on D flat, the fourth fret note. Uh, for the whole end of the second bar instead of going to C. And please use the speed controls if you're just starting, otherwise this is gonna feel way too fast for you. It takes time to build thumb speed. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four.
Being able to control whether your notes are short or long gives you a lot more musical options for fitting slap into a song so you're not just doing it in your bedroom. So for open string slaps, you just do what we've been doing. Just touch the string anywhere with your fretting hand to kill the vibration. And if you're playing a fretted note, just mute the string with the finger you're fretting with. So if I'm playing a G on the third fret and I'm done with that note, I just lift, but I stay in contact with the string so it's muted. That works pretty well, but depending on where you are, you may end up with some harmonic noise. So if that's happening to you, when you release the note, let your other fingers rest on the string at the same time, and that'll mute the string completely. Show me mute the notes. Okay, let's drill this. We'll do four short notes and four long notes, just on that G on the third fret of the E string. Nice and slow. Let's do this together a few times. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Short, 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 long, 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 short, 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 long, 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 long. One more time. Short, 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 long, 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 long. The coordination for this will be tricky at first, so just be patient and start at whatever tempo you need, but eventually you can work your way to drilling it where you just do like short, long, short, long, short, long, one after the other. So if you're ready, let's try doing that together a bit. Again, just on G, we'll just go short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. And guess what? This isn't just a wax on, wax off drill. This is actually a classic Larry Graham bass line from Sly and the Family Stone's Everyday People. Check it out. Play it with me if you're ready. One, two, three, four. Being able to kick ass with slap takes time. Not only do you have to focus on everything we just talked about, rotating the forearm, using the right part of the thumb, getting your bass in the right position, listening for note and percussion, getting good accuracy and clean tone on all four strings, but there's a bunch of other techniques associated with the slap, especially the pop technique. And you're probably antsy to start doing it super fast like all your bass idols right now. But slow down and take this advice from Mark King of Level 42 from some live clip that I downloaded from LimeWire when I was 15 that I half remember. But he basically said, the trick to playing fast is to start slow and get faster. And it sounds stupid, but that really is it. So don't rush it. Find a tempo that you can do these accuracy drills at and work on bumping it up slowly over time without sacrificing technique. And keep in mind, it can take years to be able to slap as fast as your favorite slap bass players. I used to listen to guys like Mark King and I would just go like, what the f But now I can actually keep up with that stuff after years of doing the same kind of drills that I just showed you. Thank you.